Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about Synology. Two specific Synologies. These are both new releases. They recently sent one to me, but I only have one of them. So this is the DS1520 Plus that I have in front of me right now, but we're also going to talk about the DS1621 XS Plus as well, so we can compare some specs and talk about some of these new products from Synology. Before we dive into the specs, the details and the hardware and the DSM software, if you can click that like button and first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And we'll start with full disclosure, this was sent to me by Synology for a review. I'm hoping maybe they'll send me a DS1621 XS Plus, or at some point we may order one for a client and I'll do a review of it. But this is the one that they sent me for a review, and so far with our testing the last week, has gone really well with it. Now, we didn't get any hard drives from Synology, so uh, we just threw some old hard drives that we had actually out of a retired server uh, just for the testing. So it's, we're not going to cover in depth the performance on this because I didn't put any really high performance drives in here. But let's talk about the form factor that Synology chose to use with both of these devices. You may have seen this. This is actually like the same casing they've used for a couple of years with some of their older devices. So they keep updating the hardware, but keeping this form factor. This form factor is wonderful for small businesses and home users that go, hey, I don't have a dedicated area to put servers in so they may share space with the other PCs or even sit on the desk next to you. This small form factor is, well, convenient for that, also not noisy. That's an important factor and we have on both of the units two large fans at the back. This is nice because we have good airflow without a lot of racket and that is that is something that can be really annoying where you have people go, well, can we just stick that somewhere else, like just the closet? And if you think about like a lot of these really small businesses, like a little four person office, they don't have a nice ventilated closet. So shoving servers in the closet means heat problems unless they take the time to mitigate that. Um, putting these out in the open, but not being annoying, that's great. Next thing we'll talk about, and this is common with all the technologies uh, of this form factor, is they're easy hot swap drives with a lock option. The lock option is particularly good for, well, people who want to poke at things because it looks like something you can just poke at. Now, the nice thing is they don't come out this way, they come out this way. So when you, you have to lift up on to get them out, or you can just take the key, pop a twist, and click and away they go. Now they don't come out anymore. You can pull up on them and they're gonna keep the kids, if you are using this at home, from being curious and wandering off of the hard drive. Now, even though it's hot swap and will rebuild and it's very automated with the DSM, it's better if they don't wander off of the hard drive and cause problems. Now, this particular model has an external power supply. The other one has an internal power supply. And I am aware that every time we do a Synology video, someone has to bring up that a few years ago, another YouTube channel commented that they had some Synologies that died with power supply problems. That has been re-engineered not to have that problem reoccurring. And we have been deploying a lot of these in businesses and just have well, I can't even think of one that's failed for power supply. They've actually been extremely reliable for that. Now, on the bottom here, we have two NVMe spots. Now, the purpose of these is if you want to pop an NVMe in there and set it up as a caching drive, so maybe you have some large storage drives, five of them that you filled up in these bays here, and then you want to have something that's a little, little bit faster when you're pulling files, well, they've got a pretty automated system to set up a cache drive and make your NVMe be the cache. Really straightforward and simple. I like that feature quite a bit because as much as SSDs are becoming affordable and we love how fast they are, the demand for larger and larger storage is increasing and the drive prices are still, you know, SSDs can't quite compete with some of these very large drives that have come out um, in the spinning rust series. So spinning drives are still here in 2020. They're not irrelevant, um, but there's ways to speed up if you have frequently accessed files. Now, before we go any further, let's dive into the specs. I will also link to my video of some of my favorite 
applications that we use in Synology when we use these for business. Um, I will leave a link to that video, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on a DSM software because I've already got a de dedicated video. Because that's the nice thing at Synology, they're consistent, they're, all their models run this DSM software. These two one we're talking about specifically, I can't say all their models, there's a couple exceptions, but any of the DS line are gonna run the DSM software. Now, when we look at the specs here, you'll see that we have the CPU model on the DS1520 Plus as a Intel Celeron J4125 versus the Intel Dion 1527. So we have a lot more power and an extra bay that you're gonna get with this one here. Then we both have stock eight gigs, but we have more memory slots on the 1621. We'll go down here. The big difference here, now, like I said, we have the three and a half inch, two and a half inch SSD or HDD support, but you obviously get more storage because you get one more bay with a six versus five, both hot swappable. But this is the feature I really wish they could have done on this. Now this does have four one gig ports on the back. That's awesome and you can you know lag them together to get better performance but if they could have found the you know resources to squeeze in here i would have been a little bit happier uh if you look at this is the back of the 1621 and look at number 12 right here that is a 10 gig port so you got two one gig links plus this 10 gig link that would have been a great addition to have on there and uh you know, it, it would have been nice. I'll just leave it with that, but it does not have any 10 gig options and it doesn't have any expansion options to add 10 gig. The 1621 does have one expansion port that can be added on there. Now, internal file system, I've talked about this before, but I'll mention it again. People go, well, how reliable is ButterFS? They will tell you that they've heard problems. Now, ButterFS, is implemented slightly different. They use, and the Synology DSM software has its own type of RAID controller and then runs ButterFS on top along with EXT4. So it's not like ButterFS is handling every individual drive, it's just part of the file system and allows for snapshots and features to work on there. So it's still reliable because I, if someone were to point out that there's some problems with ButterFS and the way it handles drives, you would be correct. Um, but BTRFS is available on here. No, it does not support ZFS. Sometimes that question comes up as well. And as I stated, the system fans are the same in both units. Uh, their fan speeds are about the same here and relatively quiet. We're gonna fire this one up here in a second. And you'll see how quiet it is there. Uh, easy replacement fan. Uh, it appears that the fan's a little bit easier to replace. That's one of the reasons I want to look at the physical uh, aspect of it. A little bit trickier to take this apart to get to the fans in there. So I wouldn't call it easy replacement. Now power supply unit, only 120 watt and versus 250 watt. Also noise level, 20 dBA versus 25. So yes, you're gonna get a little bit more noise out of the 1621, but not substantial. Other than that, pretty much as you go down the list here, they're pretty straightforward in terms of all the other specs. Um, and power consumption, of course, is a little bit lower. This is gonna idle with hard drive hibernation at 15 watts versus a power consumption, 36 watts. You're gonna jump up to 62 watts. But that Xeon processor, well, it's gonna pull a lot more. You get that you know, the beefier power that you might be looking for, but that does come, of course, of using more power. Pretty simple as that. And that's going to vary with, you know, the level of usage you're on, doing on there and what types of loads you've put it under. Now they'll run down all the DSM specifications and they're kind of as expected when you say, you know, maximum amount of users, maximum amount of files you want to store on here. Yeah, of course, you're going to also get a lot of bumps included that, including if you want to run this as a, not just a file server, but if you wanted to use these devices for managing the surveillance station cameras, obviously there are some limitations in there. Surveillance station system is great once you start setting this up, but yeah, you're going to need the faster one if you need more cameras and they have their selection tool when you determine how many cameras you want now and maybe how many you want in the future, if you're going to use this for surveillance station and which model to get. Both will do it, but it does bump up the maximum number of cameras when you go with the higher end one. And of course, once you have a really high volume of cameras and lots of data, that 10 gig comes into play again when you're going, hey, I would like to have that volume of data. Well, then you're gonna need to look at the 10 gig. Now, with all this said, let's fire it up real quick and just take a quick look at the DSM software. And of course, let's hear what it sounds like sitting next to me and I'll measure to see if they're accurate on their decibels here. Now the drives going through their cycle, cause these are some older enterprise drives, I think are making the most noise of anything in here are those hard drives. So I'm gonna say they're accurate. I think the ambient noise from the switches I have back here, I can hear over this. The fan noise on this, absolutely minimal. And obviously I'm recording, my microphone is right on the edge of this off screen here and 
it, I'm at the same distance essentially as this. So in terms of noise, they like I said, that's a nice feature and it's something very relevant because I know that question comes up a lot whenever I'm doing these reviews. Now, while we're waiting for this to uh, boot up and do its thing, we will go over here and talk about the price differences as of right now, September 2020. If you're looking at this video in the future, those prices, well, they may be different. Now there is, before you jump and say, I just want that 1621 with the 10 gig because that's one that works for me. Well, it's $1,800 currently on Newegg. So uh, it's very new product. So I imagine the price will come down over time, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit pricey. Yep, there's the Synology telling me it's ready to boot. So 1800 bucks, yeah, it's not average home user target. That is probably a little bit more than they wanna spend. This right here though, $699, and both of these prices are without any drives in there. Pretty reasonable uh, for all the features you get with the DSM software, which is pretty impressive. It's a, I really can't say enough good things about DSM. I overall, you know, I will, as I said, I'll leave a link to that video. It's been a great setup to use. The updates have gone smooth. And by the way, whenever I power this thing off, I just yank the power out because I always like to do this testing because, well, I want to make sure that it recovers each time. And our experience of deploying these with clients has been the same. The recovery has been really, really solid on it. So there is a pretty significant price difference between the two of them. But overall, I do wish they could have figured out how, and I think in the future we're going to see this, getting a 10 gig port on one of these smaller devices. All right. It sounds like it's all booted up. I see all the status lights on here, so let's log into it. All right, so we're logged into the DSM, and these are the things I was testing with it. First, I set up an iSCSI target, so I wanted to use this for virtual machine storage via my Zen server. So I set this up as a target, use Zen server to store files on here. Worked no problem. Didn't have any issues with it. Like I said, we've been running it for about a week and just letting a bunch of random things just constantly hammer and run on it. Unplugged it many times just to see if it would fail, but as expected and as the other Synologies, no problems recovered each time and everything worked. We set up some file shares on here. I had dumped a bunch of uh, videos in here, which we can pull these up and there's some of the videos that I had copied when I was doing demo. Now you're looking what it looks like before I edit when I'm setting everything up. So it's fast, it's no problem. The cache worked kind of as expected. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I was testing it with video and things like that to see how the cache hits were. We also set up a few NFS shares on this and tested those as well. Once again, no issues, worked quite well. So overall, uh, I'm like I said, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the DSM software. Everything's the same as both the DSM software and all of them. The nice consistency of the way Synology works has been wonderful. And that includes even if you want to set this up with certain high availability features and failover and replication, um, those are all different features that Synology does have support for. So you can pair different Synologies together. So overall, I think this is a great box. Other than my only complaint is that I wish it did have 10 gig because, well, once you have a pair of NVMEs and you want to put some reasonably fast hard drives on there, um, saturating four ports, well, that's easy. So if they can make another model in between, it doesn't cost that as much as the 16 and as much as this would be wonderful. But if you're looking for a good turnkey NAS system, uh, we've always been happy with the Synologies. Uh, they're definitely one of the products we sell quite a few of. And like I said, I'll leave a link to my video where I kind of talk about some of the favorite applications we use for business on there. But I know a lot of home users um, will use it for Plex and things like that. And yeah, that's other features you can definitely do with this. All right, I'll leave links to uh, the pages on this and I'll leave the Amazon link that's available for this one. The other one's not available on Amazon yet. Uh, only found it on Newegg. So keep an eye out if you're in our Sydney's and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.